It's um, time for us to begin. Welcome, everybody. I am Iris and I am a health and wellness educator for Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare. Welcome to Ergo Health presentation. This is all about um, home uh, ergonomics specific to working from home. I'm a certified ergonomist, but I've also been in the health and wellness industry since the 80s. My specialty besides ergonomics is in body problems. So I'm gonna save um, time at the end of the presentation since we are recording for any questions that you may have about ergonomics, your workstation, um, body issues. So please keep that in mind and uh, let's begin. So basic ergonomics that we all need to know, um, how you work is what will create, and I'm gonna give you the bad news first, and then I'm gonna give you all the good news. So um, uh, how you work creates the strain and fatigue um, to your spine and your, su your supporting muscles, which then can go and create injuries. And think about this, ergonomic injuries, just like with many you know, um, sports injuries, exercise injuries, they're cumulative and they're preventable. So I want you to think of someone who might be, let's say a runner, and for years and years and years, that person runs and never stretches out the muscles that they worked when they were running. And then all of a sudden they tear an Achilles or a calf muscle and they wonder, oh, how did this happen? What well, was the years of the, um, the strain on the muscles from running and then not taking the time afterwards to put back in flexibility, elongate the muscles so the muscles become stiff and are more prone to tearing. Same thing with ergonomics. So I'd like you to just do this with me for a moment. Don't worry, no one can see you, but you can see me, hopefully. Um, I'd like you to sit the way your body wants you to sit. So that means you, you're most likely gonna slump because gravity is pulling us this way. Now think about the body mechanics of this because so much about ergonomics is about how you use your body, okay? I say this all the time, you can have the most perfect workstation but you can still trash your body by how you sit and by not having good body mechanics and posture, which I, I hope you'll learn by the end of this presentation. So think about what's going on with your body right now when you slump sit. Your shoulders are getting tight, especially the anterior deltoids, which are right here. Your chest muscles are constricted. Your middle back muscles are overly stretched because you're in a rounded position. They are always supposed to be slightly contracted to keep you up. Your abdominal muscles, which are so important to help support your spine, are not engaged. You can't keep your belly muscles pulled in and your core engaged if you're in a slump position. You have to be up. So just think about this and think about now the pressure on your lower back. You're sitting back on your, your tailbone. When you do that, your discs are getting compressed. So just from this one posture that you might sit in, and um, I'm just using this one as example, there are many that are unhealthy for the body, but just this one can create all that havoc with your body if you do this hour after hour, month after month, years after years, all of a sudden it creates injuries. Um, so let's move on because I've covered everything else. So um, your muscles form around the posture that you keep just like they change when you exercise. So if you lift weights, if any of you have lifted weights, like a bicep curl with a weight in your hand, you know that that bicep muscle starts to change its shape and its form. Same thing with your, with your muscles around the posture that you keep. If you kept that slumped posture, your muscles start to form around that. Your anterior shoulder starts getting very tight so it's hard to straighten up. Your chest gets very tight, your middle back muscles get overly stretched. And that's why people often get kinky pains between the shoulder blades when they go to straighten up. So you can prevent these muscular aches and pain, pains and then potential injuries by paying attention to your body while you work. Um, hopefully we're, we're paying attention to what we eat and to exercise, but working on posture and adopting good body mechanics while you work is another key element of your overall health. And how you work today will determine whether or not um, we develop body problems in the future. So let's talk about spine health because everything is, so much affected, your spine is so affected by um, prolonged sitting and standing. Compression is the most common cause of back pain. When we sit, our, our um, discs get compressed by their, they are the shock absorbers in between um, each vertebrae. And when we sit, 
we um, compress those shock absorbers. And when we stand up, we release that pressure. A lot of sitting, which we do today for work, we were when we were commuting to work, but causes a lot of compression on the spine. Also, the lack of having a strong core in the front part of the body to balance the support for your spine is another reason for um, back pain and injuries. You're, um, so many people will say to me, well, sitting is the new smoking, right? Well, it's really not sitting, it's the lack of movement. And exercise and movement is what relieves pressure on the muscles from sit sitting or standing too long. And the rule is for every 50, every 5-0 minutes of standing or sitting, you need five to 10 minutes of consistent movement to break up the tension in the muscles. So what I suggest is um, you, you set something, you know, a clock, a reminder, 50 minutes goes by, you then take five or five minutes to go walk somewhere, get uh, your water, walk, as far as you can in your home or if you are in an office and then five minutes back. And your spine and your bones need weight bearing movement to generate bone health. And the most important thing is good body mechanics and posture, which is so crucial to your spine health. So look at posture as we age, we can, again, it's gravity pulling us down. We start, you know, and when we're younger, very upright. And then over time, especially with computer, now, computer use now, we get more and more rounded. And that's what we want to avoid. And you can avoid that by engaging with your muscles in a way that gives you good posture and alignment. So what are you doing with your body right now? We've become a generation of slumpers. I take pictures everywhere I go. It's, um, my, it's, it drives my kids crazy. Uh, but I see things like this. I was in a mall, this woman was sitting in a mall and let's unpack what she's doing to her body. She's sitting in a C shape. She's putting, which puts a lot of pressure on her tailbone, compressing her discs. Look at the shoulders. But the most disconcerting thing to me about this picture is her head. Look at her head. Her head is way out here and arched. Your head weighs on average eight to 10 pounds. So that's eight to 10 pounds of pressure on the cervical discs. And when your head is out here, you are just encouraging the cervical discs to bulge. Let's look at that. Someone has their laptop on their desk, rounded over. Very common thing that I see or maybe that you're doing at home. And I'm gonna show you how to fix all this. So just bear with me. So many people working in beds, hunched over, head forward, body slumped. Or like this, I always caught my kids um, working like this, even though they had beautiful ergonomic workstations when they were growing up. So here are the uncommon, the, the most common unhealthy postures. So head forward, I talked about that. Looking up or looking down. When you look up, you are arching and putting strain on your cervical discs. And, and same thing when you're looking down, you're asking them to bulge. Um, you wanna have your head straight on when you're looking at your screen. Earlobes align directly over your shoulders and your head should be directly looking directly forward, not a little bit to the right or to the left or a little bit up or a little bit down. You want it neutral. Your hands, um, often people work with their hands raised above their elbows like this. And I want you to do this with me for a moment. Bring your hands above your elbows and feel where you feel tension, most likely in the neck and shoulders. Now lower your hands so that your wrists are lower than your elbows and your elbows are directly by your sides like that. So your arm is completely relaxed in a 90 degree and your wrist is a little lower than your elbows and your fingers are in a downward slope. That's ideally how you want your arms when you're keying. Um, another unhealthy posture is shoulders raised, neck tense. We, we tense our necks without even realizing it. That's just where tension goes. So you wanna be mindful of what your body is doing when you're working. Watch for the shoulders and for that kind of tension. And if you feel yourself tensing, do some shoulder rolls where you just come forward, up, back and down and really feel the drop in the shoulder and try to maintain that drop. Um, perching on the edge of your seat. Very often we do this because the chair might not be comfortable, but when you perch, you don't tend to stay up using your core, you tend to eventually start to get into that slumped posture. Sitting back on the tailbone, people lean back in their chair and sit back on the tailbone. That's another 
um, unhealthy posture, slump sitting. I talked about legs crossed. I am the most guilty of doing this, of crossing one leg over the other. We all tend to do this and always cross the same leg. But look at what's going on when I do this. My top leg, these muscles are getting elongated, but the bottom leg, these muscles are getting shortened. And over time, that creates an imbalance in your body. Same thing if you tuck your foot under your um, bottom. And that if you do sit with your foot tucked under your bottom, um, you also are straining the ligaments in the knee. So what I suggest is just keep catching yourself. If you're crossing your leg, uncross, cross at your ankle. Obviously leaning to one side, leaning forward. But the worst thing is to not have, not that the worst thing, these are all bad, but one of the worst things is not using your core at all. So body mechanics, whether you're sitting or standing, and I'm gonna show you how to use your core in a moment. So these are the basic body mechanics that you wanna to try to adopt. Shoulders down and relaxed, neck elongated. Think of the top of your head pulling toward the ceiling, earlobes aligned over the shoulders I talked about, using your middle back muscles. You can do a very simple exercise and I'd like you to do this with me. I'll bring your arms up for a moment. Now, most likely your shoulders came up with it. So bring your arms back down. Now I want you to pull your shoulder blades toward each other slightly, opening the chest, press your shoulders down. Now bring your arms up, but don't let the shoulders come up with it. Now you should feel your lat muscles in your back engage, your muscles between your shoulder blades. Do that exercise just a few times and that will help to train those muscles to work properly. Um, Chest open, think of uh, buttons popping on a shirt, the way you want your chest, like you're real proud. Your lower body, you wanna sit up tall using your core and up on your sit bones, keeping space between the bottom of your rib and the top of your hip. So let's go back to that for a moment. So let me have you do, do a, a, a quick core exercise. So sit toward the edge of your seat. So you do not have back support right now. What I'd like you to do is sit up tall, engage your core, your back stays in a nice relaxed position. You're not ramrod straight, you keep your natural curve. Lift using your belly muscles. So now that you've created space between the bottom of your rib and the top of your hip, look at what happens with the rest of your body. You naturally zip up. I'd like you to hold this for one minute starting right now. And what I suggest is Try to, for one minute out of every hour, do this. Remind yourself, set a, set, make an appointment, set an alarm to do whatever your buzzword is. Do your core exercise. Sit up tall for one minute out of every hour, then forget about it. Do that for a week, just so you get into the habit of being mindful about this. Then next week, do it for three minutes. And then over time, gradually build yourself up to 15 minutes that you can sit up, core engaged, you're breathing from your rib cage, your belly muscles are pulled in. When you get to the point where you can do this for 15 minutes, this becomes your new normal. And when you slump sit or you go into another bad posture, you catch yourself and you go up oh, and you pull yourself back up. So that's one very simple exercise that you can do to um, train the core to support your spine. So that was a minute, it, a minute's not easy. All right, so let's break it down from the head to the toe. Let's start with um, your seat. You wanna adjust the chair to fit your body as best as you can. You start at your feet and you work your way up. I know very, very um, I know many people are home. They might not have the normal chair that you have at your office, um, but do the best that you can making the adjustments on your chair. Uh, start at your feet. You want your feet in line with your, um, your knees in line with your hips. Foot rest can be um, tremendously helpful for the low back and they're a very inexpensive fix. And so are lumbar supports for chairs. And I'm gonna show you some examples of those things um, down the road. Ergonomic guidelines for the monitor. You want your height of the monitor so that the bridge of your nose is in line with the top of the text of whatever you use the most in terms of a program so that you're looking straight on at the monitor. Remember earlobes over your shoulders. You don't wanna be turning the head from side to side, looking up or looking down. You wanna be looking straight on. If you have two monitors, have them touching 
and make a slight V with the two monitors, have them at the same proper height. And the V gives you the ability to just barely turn your head side to side to see each screen. The distance should be 22 to 24 inches away from your face, which is the length of most people's arms. You should be able to reach forward and barely touch your screen. And lighting and glare is actually an easier thing, an easier thing to control when we're home because we don't have um, overhead lights that can't shut off like you do in an office environment. So if you are in a home office and you have control, what's nice is to shut off the overhead lights and then put a desk lamp where you work and highlight your work area. It's much more soothing on your eyes. And I'm going to save time for questions, so just hang tight with your questions. I'll get to, I'll make sure we have time for all of them. Keyboard. If you're using a keyboard, you want it centered between the shoulder blades. If you have legs on the back of your keyboard like this, see these little legs? You want these down because when the legs are up, it's encouraging your wrists to flex. Your arms, I showed you before, 90 degree, wrists lower than the elbows, fingers lower than the hands, no wrinkling at the jet at the wrist. And using a palm rest made out of gel like that, I like these that are gel, along with a mouse rest, same thing. Mine has a little gel pad here. These can help tremendously to make you more comfortable, keep your wrists in a neutral alignment and, um, and help prevent contact stress from rubbing against a desk. So the mouse, the distance, if you're using a mouse and not a keyboard on your laptop, the distance of a mouse should be where your elbows are close to your body. I'm gonna show you. So my elbows are touching my sides, no space between my elbows and my body. This is where I can V, this is where I can mouse. This is called the V space. As soon as my elbows go away from my body, now I am putting tension more in my shoulders. When they are touching, I am more relaxed in my shoulders and my upper body is gonna help take the strain, not my shoulders. You wanna to try to limit your movement and a great thing to do is use a wireless mouse and alternate size. And I know a lot of people think I'm crazy when I suggest this, but you can do it. I'm a lefty and I can mouse as well with my right as I can with my left. Um, it's a great brain exercise. And then what it's doing is helping um, break up the tension on one side of your body from cum uh, cumulative use and overuse when you alternate your sides. And what the research shows about um, alternative mice, there's no research that says, oh, this particular mouse is going to prevent injuries. What it does show is that if you're using a mouse and you're starting to get sore or uncomfortable, changing the type of mouse can make a big difference. So if you're using a regular mouse like this, and you swap to a trackball or a touchpad, that's what can make a big difference in, um, in the comfort of your hands. So laptops, oh my goodness, they are the most fabulous thing for convenience, but they're the worst thing for your body if you just put them on a desk and hunch over the way this woman is in the picture. Terrible neck alignment, look at her neck, everything I talked about, head hanging, hands too high, tension in the um, shoulders, rounded shoulders. So the way you can work with a laptop, there's two ways. If you wanna be at a desk, use a laptop riser so that the screen of your laptop is now higher and in better alignment with your eye line and use wireless keyboard and mouse. Or another way you can use a laptop is reclining. And what you do is you get a lap desk like I have here. This is a lap desk from Amazon, space to mouse, my laptop's here. And when I sit back in a reclining position, my hands are very relaxed. Look at that relaxed position in my arms. And now my eye line is better because I'm reclining. I have my feet up on something that raises the screen on the lap, the laptop. So I know it sounds crazy, but working in a slightly reclined position with a lap desk can really help prevent injuries. and they're very inexpensive. And I'm gonna go through all the inexpensive at-home solutions. So stand with you in another slide coming. So standing while working, standing is not, I'm a big believer in adjustability. I think it's great, but standing is not the answer to, um, pr to uh, preventing body problems from sitting. There's a whole host of problems that have 
cropped up from people who stand too much. Uh, people are getting falling, arch uh, falling arches, um, knee problems, varicose veins, hip problems because people will stand and they'll sink into one hip and they won't stand with good body mechanics. So the same thing applies when you're standing to when you're sitting in terms of your body mechanics. You need your monitor at the correct height, your arms in a relaxed position. Um, you need standing shoes because they are different than regular shoes. That's why you see chefs and nurses and doctors in um, clogs or cork-based shoes. An anti-fatigue mat can also help um, tremendously with uh, helping with, with relieving pressure. And the body mechanics are so important when you're standing, your core should be engaged, your knees relaxed, and everything else is the same about your body being zipped up, chest open, and shoulders down. And the same rule applies. 50 minutes of standing, you need five to 10 minutes of movement to break up the tension in the muscles that occur from prolonged standing. So here's some inexpensive, easy fixes. Lap desk for a laptop. There's a ton of them. I don't recommend any one particular company or model since there's so many and you've got to find the one that's right for you, but there's tons of them on Amazon or Staples. A footrest, that's a very inexpensive fix for low back tension. Um, a back support for a chair. If your chair's not great and you don't have budget to get a better chair, you can get a, a support for the back of your chair that gives you better support. Um, sitting discs are another thing. This is a sitting disc. This is from a company called Fitball. And when you sit on this, and I don't suggest all day, just maybe 10 minutes out of every hour, it makes you use your core. I've even used a fit ball, which you use for exercise. I've even put this behind my back if I don't have my back rest, and that can help. So there's lots of easy, inexpensive fixes. These are $9. Um, laptop risers, staple cells, the uh, risers that come in two inch increments, a pack of four, I think they're maybe $25 or less. Um, you can invest in a monitor riser so you have total height adjustability for your, mo your monitor. I talked about wireless keyboard trays um, and mouse. And a neck wrap for relaxation. I love these. This is a neck wrap and it's, um, it has seeds in it. You microwave it and you put it on your neck and it becomes moist heat that is fantastic for your neck muscles. So not only this one has lavender, so not a smell to it, not only is it relaxing, but it gives you nice warm heat for the muscles. And it's also hefty enough to, it helps keep your, your neck and shoulders down. So here's your ideal workstation setup. We went over all of this. I just wanted to give you a quick visual. So here are my closing thoughts, and then we'll, um, I'll open it up for questions. Your ergonomic health is a key element to your body's overall health. Just as what you eat and exercising and sleep, these are all important elements of your health. But think about how important ergonomics is because we're, we're in positions all day. We're working with computers and at workstations all day. With any behavior change, small incremental steps toward that change works the best. I like to give the example of someone who decides they're gonna run and they go out and they run two miles their first day and then they can't walk for a week. If that person had gone out and walked a little bit, ran a little bit, just did one mile, did that and gradually over time, gradually increased how far they ran, um, that then they wouldn't have had that pain and soreness in their muscles, they would have adapted. Same thing with ergonomic changes. Give yourself time to make these changes. I like 30 days is really what um, the amount of time for something to become a habit. Stretch and move throughout the day. You don't have to wait until you have a moment to work out your whole day, especially if you're home, is an opportunity to fit in some stretches. There are tons of resources on Harvard Pilgrim's site um, online for stretches that you can do at your workstation and commit to at least one positive change that you can make to help prevent injuries. You've learned a lot here and just try to pick one that really resonates with you. Don't forget about that 50 rule, 55, 10 rule. Um, try to be as active as possible throughout the day and work toward 
eventually over time having great posture and body mechanics to prevent ergonomic injuries. So this is to give you a smile. I'm obviously a dog person um, and I will now take questions. Thank you so much for your time. So questions. So I think I did answer the standing question. Um, is that I, um, the, the, I'm, I'm not recommending standing over sitting. What I'm recommending is whether you, I, I'm a big believer in adjustability. So if you can do both and alternate, that's great. Um, but what's most important is whether you stand or whether you sit, you only do either thing for no more than 50 minutes before you take a break and you move around for a little bit. Um, the recording of the of this session would uh, will will I'm I'm I hope I'm speaking correctly, uh, Andrea. Correct me if I'm wrong. Would be on the Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare site. Any other questions that I can answer for you? Please put it in the chat. Yes, for every fifty minutes of sitting, um, walk around five minutes, just move, just, just get out of your, your seat. You can walk around in the office if you, um, it's so important to wear a headset also to, so you're not cradling the phone like that. So wear a headset, make a phone call. Every 50 minutes, you could plug in a phone call and move around while you are talking on the phone. What else can I answer for you? I love when people ask me questions. Yes, this, this um, session has been recorded and the slides and the recording will be available um, through Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare. Any questions on the presentation or anything about um, body problems, ergonomics, it's, uh, I'm here. We have more time, so I'm more than happy. Yes, of course, someone wants to see that last slide, hang on. You don't want to see the last slide of the do, the the doodle and the um, Norwich Terriers. I'm I'm joking. Here you go. So let's just look at this for a moment. Elbows um, above the desk. The, the your elbows should be in a 90 degree. Your shoulders relaxed. Your wrists. I like them a little bit lower um, than your forearms. Your knees in line with your hips. So this really just goes over um, everything that we that we talked about. Any other questions? Oh, there's a million stretches for your back and your shoulders. I will show you two of my favorites, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back here so you can see me. This is just two stretches for your back and your shoulders. One easy one is sit on the edge of your seat, lean forward till you can grab the back of your chair, look down, Take a big breath in, and as you exhale, just imagine you're trying to stand up, but you can't because you're holding on to the back of your chair. Make sure you are looking down. That is so important. Super gentle stretch for the front part of your shoulders. So that's an easy one. For your back, here's another easy one. Sitting on the edge of your seat, hold on to either your knees, or you can hold on between your legs to the edge of the chair, whatever works best. Pull yourself up tall, take a big breath in. And as you exhale, just round your back, drop your chin. And imagine you are, think of it the way a cat stretches its back, that you're trying to pull your belly button to the back of your chair. So you're doing that, you're rounding backwards. Now just pull up tall again into that posture that I talked about, up nice and tall on your sit bones, space between the bottom of your rib, the top of your hip, take a big breath in, exhale and round back again, dropping your chin to your chest. So this is called the cat stretch and lengthening. So you could do this a few times, let's do it again, round back, tuck your chin, exhale, very gentle and release and come up tall. You can do that a few times and that is such an easy, quick stretch for your shoulders and for your back. One of the most important things is the stretches should always feel good. They should never hurt. 
And you always, if you have any body problems or health issues, you check with the doctor if you have any health concerns before you try any new type of exercise. Any other questions? We have an answer to where the, um, uh, the presentation will be on the Harvard Pilgrim YouTube page. And um, any other questions about the presentation, about stretching your body? And thank you are also very welcome. Thank you for um, thank you for your questions and for your feedback. I really appreciate it. Anything else before I end this presentation? Well, thank you all for your time and um, take care. And I hope I hope you learned a lot about ergonomics and uh, and take care. <laughs>